Hey everyone, Carl here with Literate Lessons bringing you a deep dive featuring Zama Zenta this week. Uh, I know we all voted on Galarian Zapdos and that episode will be coming out on Friday, but I figured it'd be cool to cover an additional fighting type restricted alongside it that does a lot of the same similar things that Galarian Zapdos does. Uh, but before we get into covering Zamazenta too far, remember to hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, uh, all the fun YouTube stuff. It helps us out a ton. Uh, if you haven't yet, make sure to join our Discord and go join ATX's Discord. Uh, ATX is hosting a charity event for uh, the Santos family and their daughter Belle, who was diagnosed with a very serious brain tumor. Um, would love to see you at the tournament on October 9th and 10th. Uh, it would mean a lot to us from our community and theirs if you could go and show your support for them. So what does Zamazenta actually do here? Zamazenta is a very defensive Pokemon. In contrast to Zacian's Intrepid Sword, Zamazenta has the the Dauntless Shield or whatever it's called, the, the, the defense boosting version of Z Zacian's ability. Um, other things that Zamazenta does really well is just applying general buffs to his team. Uh, Zamazenta gets access to moves like Howl and Coaching, which are really, really useful. Uh, you also get access to things like Wide Guard and Snarl. So Zamazenta is more supportive style, whereas Zacian is more offensive. Um, that being said, Zamazenta still has a cool place in the meta and can do a lot of powerful things for teams that may be looking for something that's a little bit more supportive out of their restricted fight of Pokemon. When we look at the history of Zamazenta, uh, you can't really talk about Zamazenta without talking about how oppressive Zacian is and how lackluster Zamazenta seems to be. Now, part of that could be attributed to uh, just overall game sales, I would call it. Zamazenta is less prevalent because less people have it. I remember in the early days of Pokemon Home, everybody was looking for Zamazenta just to complete their Pokedex, to just have it, and things like that. Uh, and because of that, I think just having less Zamazenta means that people play with it less, people don't know what it does as much. Uh, and that means Zamazenta also struggles when it comes to terms of VGC. If there's less access to it, there's going to be less want to try and play with it. Now, that's not all that's the problem with Zamazenta. It definitely has some downsides. Uh, not being super duper offensive, it's still fairly fast. Um, has weaknesses to fire and ground just like Zacian does. It just doesn't output as much offensive pressure like Zacian does and can struggle with a lot of these neutral hits even though it's got good bulk. However, if we ever see the normal GS or double restricted format come back into play, I feel like Zamazenta is just going to be a shoe in Zamazenta and Yvelta are both very powerful restricteds in their own rights that fit very well into these two restricted formats because you get to play one offensive powerful restricted and then you can play a more supportive bulkier restricted like Yvelta or Zamazenta or even like a Calyrex or something weird like that to where you don't have to try and rely on your first restricted as much uh so it'd be kind of cool to see what happens in like a gs cup if zamazenta and zacian become a, a duo pairing that we see uh very popularized common partners for zamazenta uh tend to be more on the damage side zamazenta still has a 130 base attack it just doesn't get the boost like zacian does to with intrepid sword Instead, we have Dauntless Shield, which boosts our defense plus one, which helps us survive a little bit more hits more often, but we do need a little bit more help because a lot of our weaknesses are very common. Uh, a lot of the common answers right now are things like Landorus or Entei, Incineroar to our Zamazenta, so we try to match these with our own ground and fire types to kind of mitigate that damage. Uh, grass types are also fairly common, uh, mainly as just like interaction and redirection in the form of Amoongus and Rillaboom. Uh, and even the rare Tapu Fini that's kind of just fallen off the face of Series 10 after being so prevalent in Series 9 and Series and pretty much in Series 8 as well, um, Tapu Fini offers Zamazenta this really cool role of you don't have to worry about being burnt, you don't have to worry about being status, and also answers both fire and ground types that can cause you issues when you're looking to play with Zamazenta. When we look at the metagame breakout here, we see Behemoth Bash here is at 98%. Uh, for those that may not know, Behemoth Bash is the exact same as Behemoth Blade. Uh, it's the whatever crowned form, Iron Head, or Steel type move you want to use. Uh, it does double damage. It does essentially normal damage to Dynamax targets because it deals double damage to Dynamax targets when they have doubled HP. 
It just it's normal damage. Uh, other moves we see are things like close combat. Uh, you also get access to play rough and wild charge, just like Zacian does. Uh, wide guard, substitute, protect, all very common moves right now. As we get into the lower numbers, though, we start to see things like Howl, Crunch, Snarl, and Coaching. Uh, these are more niche picks. Uh, I personally prefer the Wide Guard, Coaching, Snarl, Behemoth, Let Bash sets. These bulkier, more supportive utility kind of sets with Crown Zacian are really, really fun to play with. Um, when we look at common items, obviously, Rusted Shield is currently the most, most used item at 100% usage. But as we get into the move sets, I have a very special set that I want to talk about that was popularized by Moxie Boosted after a little bit of testing. Um, if you are if you aren't aware, it is a choice band set, which I think has some really cool insights into what makes Zamazenta tick, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. When you're looking to build with Zamazenta, the crowned form uh, fears very little when it comes to terms of weaknesses. Uh, being a fighting steel type, you actually mitigate your weaknesses to flying and psychic because steel resists both of those uh, types, so you don't have to worry as much about taking super effective hits for them. However, you trade those weaknesses for weaknesses to fire and ground, which are much more common. Uh, you should still plan for ways to beat these fire and ground type coverage or just fire and ground type Pokemon specifically. Uh, like I mentioned, things like Tapu Fini or a very powerful water type are very, very good. Gyarados might be a very good pairing, uh, just something to think about. Intimidate plus water is really good coverage, and you're also immune to ground type moves that would be inflicted towards your Zamazenta. And what Zamazenta lacks in speed and offense, it makes up for with its really good bulk. I believe both of its defenses are 145. Uh, and after a Dauntless Shield boost, you can get that 145 into the stratosphere when it comes to just sheer bulk. Uh, so don't worry too much about trying to make Zamazenta carry your team. Yes, it does have base 130 attack, but if you don't have need to invest into attack to pick up your KOs, you don't have to. Uh, definitely look at playing with Zamazenta as more of a support Pokemon rather than an offensive carry. When we're looking at move sets here, Zamazenta always looks to play more support than it does offense. Aside from the choice band set at the very, very bottom, both of these sets are kind of bulky, fast, and look to kind of help the team do what it needs to while also chipping away at opponents. Um, this first set is max speed, almost max attack, decent defenses, close combat, behemoth, bash, protect, and howl. This is super standard, super common right now. If you do see a Zamazenta on ladder, this is likely what it's going to be. Uh, the second set here is a little bit more my speed when it comes to Zamazenta. I look to play a longer, slower game with a bulkier Zamazenta, looking to abuse Snarl and Coaching to boost my stats and lower my opponents, compare and pairing that with like a Incineroar or a Landorus or even a Gyarados to kind of intimidate my opponent down to where my boosted defense means even more. Uh, we also get access to Wide Guard, which is very, very powerful in this format. Things like Kyogre, Groudon, uh, Calyrex Shadow, Calyrex Ice, there's a whole lot of spread damage right now, so having access to Wide Guard, even if it's on your Restricted, is a good thing. Don't fear about using Wide Guard on your Restricted like this, because overall, Zamazenta is going to be a support first. Uh, you're not going to have to worry too much about being offensively pressuring and trying to one-hit KO Pokemon on this thing. As for the last set here, this Choice Band set, this is the exact set from Moxie Boosted. Uh, this is fairly good attack. I believe it gets to 180 speed with that speed investment. Fun fact, regular Zamazenta outspeeds Crown Zamazenta. Kind of just like a... Uh, it makes sense when you think about it as Zamazenta Crown gets heavier with the shield on its back and face. Whereas regular Zamazenta gets to kind of keep that speed. So regular Zamazenta is at... This Zamazenta gets to 180. Uh, if you get with like Tailwind, you get the 360, and you could you don't need to outspeed a Lecky, but you if you wanted to, you could always change some numbers around. Uh, I'm not sh quite sure what the defense investments are for, and I'm not quite sure what like what your spec to survive, but you do deal a lot of damage with close combat, play rough, wild charge, and iron head. Those four moves give you coverage for almost the entirety of the format, uh, in some shape or form, for a neutral hit. So don't think that the uh, Zacian and Zamazenta are locked into playing with their uh, rusted items. Uh, definitely can, this, this goes ahead and shows that Zamazenta can definitely play without the rusted shield and maybe even Zacian to an extent. 
As I mentioned earlier, Zamazenta Crown specifically is weak to fire and ground. Uh, so definitely Pokemon like Incineroar and Landorus uh, Therian do really, really well in stopping and opposing Zamazenta. Uh, both with the fact that they have Intimidate and they have super effective damage against that Zamazenta, they both can just, can just offer really big hits into what could be a threat to your team. Um, regular Zamazenta is only base fighting, so you are weak to Psychic and Flying. Um, so those coverage moves are a little less common, so you might actually get away with more being a Choice Banded Zamazenta than a Rusted Shield Zamazenta. Uh, another big thing that Zamazenta does, like I mentioned, is a lot of the buffing of your team in itself. Uh, Dauntless Shield gives it a buff, Howl, and then Coaching buffs its partner. Uh, so if you could clear away those buffs, like with like a Haze or a Clear Smog, uh, it'd be that much easier to take down the Zamazenta team as a whole. Uh, definitely look into uh, redirection as well. Uh, Zamazenta is very single target unless you're just clicking Snarl all the time. So if you can like redirect that Behemoth Bash into an Amoongus with a decent defense investment, your team will be better off for it. So what have we learned about Zamazenta today? Uh, while it doesn't offer a ton offensively like its counterpart Zacian, it makes up for that with an increase in defensive bulk and its bevy of utility moves. Um, I think Zacian gets a good chunk of those same utility moves. Uh, Zacian gets like Quick Guard, um, pretty sure it gets access to Snarl as well, but we just don't see those moves out of Zacian as often because of its just offensive prowess. If you ever find yourself struggling against Zacian, uh, Incineroar and Landorus Therian can be very, very powerful answers, both with just being Intimidators and just having super effective hits. Um, Incineroar and Landorus are both very common right now as well, so if you're playing Zamazenta on the, on the off chance that you just want to, definitely keep an eye out for those Pokemon and have answers for those. And while it's not very common in the current meta, uh, Zacian kind of pushes this one way out of the format, uh, Zamazenta can still offer teams a unique perspective in team building for Series 10. I think there's a lot of untapped potential in Zamazenta, especially in a no Dynamax format. Uh, there's, I think there's just a couple things that are keeping it down, but if you can team build and solve away those problems, Zamazenta can probably be a very powerful force in this format. And with that being said, I want to thank you all for hanging out and listening to me ramble about Zamazenta today. Make sure to check us out on Twitter. All of our handles are there on screen. Check out the Discord link in the description down below. If you follow our Discord link, you can join the ATX Discord through our announcements channel. Uh, all of the information for the charity event will be on their battle pie, which I will also link in the description down below. And remember to subscribe. It helps us out a ton. Ring the bell. Comment down below uh, who you want to seek for deep dives later on in the month. Uh, we're running out of Series 10 very, very quickly, so I'd like to hear what Restricteds you'd like to see before we don't get to see Restricteds maybe for a little while. And with that being said, have a wonderful morning, afternoon, evening. We're out in the world, and we will see you all on Friday with Galarian Zapdos. Bye, everyone. <laughs>